Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing fantastic. So we are digging into Frederick Nietzsche's The Spoke Zarathustra book. I have loved philosophy. It's one of my favorite subjects and I'll always love it. And I think it's very witty to read this book and it provides a lot of entertainment. Go ahead and listen to this as you're cooking, you're driving, you're walking, you're on the subway, whatever fun thing it is that you're doing. Let's begin. We were in the paragraph titled, On the Way of the Creator. Let's begin. Today, you are still suffering from the many being one. Today, your courage and your hopes are still whole. But the time will come when solitude will make you weary. When solitude will make you weary. When your pride will double up and your courage gnash its teeth. And you will cry, I am alone. The time will come when that which seems high to you will no longer be in sight. And that which seems low will be all too near. Now what I like so far about this is it really does get how the dynamic nature of solitude. You can love solitude for a while and then after it actually can feel really burdensome. I think a lot of us new moms know this particularly well because you're like oh I want alone time then you miss your baby. Then when you're raising your baby in the first few months it's such an intensive time you don't have energy to really interact too much with people some women at least and postpartum depression can come on and you can feel quite lonely and it's very important for people to check on you then when your kids are older you're in your old age you can enjoy some solitude in the tomato garden relaxing reading having a cup of coffee or you can be in an old folks home completely sad and miserable because you're alone no one's visiting you you can feel crowded at times and want space at times so this sort of reckoning in your mind of that you are alone sometimes and you can just feel so alone that it shocks you and it no longer feels like this relaxing time but rather it's something that causes you frustration and anguish even what seems sublime to you will frighten you like a ghost and you will cry all is false so what do we have here Everything is false. I'm alone. It <laughs> sounds like a little bit nihilistic, doesn't it? Like, everything is fake. Nothing's real. It's all garbage. It's like, sounds like s someone who's just woken up to the corruption of politics. There are feelings which wants to kill the lonely. And if they do not succeed, well, then they themselves must die. But are you capable of this? To be a murderer? My brother, do you know the word contempt yet? And the agony of your justice being just to those who despise you? You force many to relearn about you. They charge it bitterly against you. You came close to them and yet passed by that they will never forgive. You pass over and beyond them, but the higher you ascend, the smaller you appear to the eye of envy. That's interesting. The higher you ascend, the smaller you appear to the eye of envy. That one's a tricky one. Because it almost makes it, because you're literally going up, so you're going to get smaller because of the distance. But we would think that the higher you go in economic status and the wealth and the luxury, you're higher up in a sense, and that would actually cause more envy, right? So very poetic way to frame it but most of all they hate those who fly who those who fly it almost makes you think of it evokes these thoughts of people who can travel here travel there go to their sort of carefree floating existence because when you're soaring the eagle is soaring rather it's on high it's, you know 
the arrow can still match it in the side, but you have to have a good archer for that, don't you? When you're soaring above the others, everything seems small, and the breeze is quite nice, isn't it? How would you be just to me? You must say, I choose your injustice as my proper lot. Injustice and filth they throw after the lonely one. But my brother, if you would be a star, you must not shine less for them because of that. If you be a star, you must not shine. Hmm. Shine in the darkness, show the others the way out. Yet as you shine, you bother the eyes of others and then they just can't stop staring at you, bringing envy. Lots of ways to look at that statement. And beware of the good and the just. They like to crucify those who invent their own virtue for themselves. They hate the lonely one. Now that's quite interesting. Those who can tend to be the most just, the most good, are the ones who love to crucify others. Hmm. Beware also of holy simplicity. Everything that is not simple, it considers unholy. That's a good point. That's like actually a really good one. People who can over, like, oh, we have everything so simple. And then if you have something complex, they think it's unholy. That's a unique one that I have to agree with. It also likes to play with fire at the stake. And beware also of the attacks of your love. The lonely one offers his hand too quickly to whomever he encounters. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You're lonely, you can kind of be clingy, very needy, very rash. Like some people who haven't talked to others in a while. They get someone who starts to have a conversation with them. They kind of get too private too quick, reveal too much. To some people, you might not give your hand only a paw. And I desire that your paw should also have claws. <laughs> yeah. That's a good phrase right there. Dog paw ain't gonna scratch you too bad, but... Tiger paw. There you go. But the worst enemy you can encounter will always be you, yourself. You lie in wait for yourself in caves and woods. Now this is a unique phrase as well because... In caves and in woods, that's when you're really alone and your minds are the ones that are going to bounce around in your head, really getting at you, really challenging you. The whispers of shaitan kind of really get you. You have to be mindful of being able to think beautiful thoughts, motivational thoughts, and then cynical, nihilistic ones. Each one has truth, but you got to be careful because they, you can overflatter yourself and also not give yourself enough credit. It's a good balance there. Lonely one, you are going the way to yourself. And your way leads past yourself and your seven devils. You will be a heretic to yourself and a witch and a soothsayer and a fool and a doubter and a holy one and a villain. So here, getting at the complexity... And the paradox of what it means to have these conflicting things within your heart. You have a doubter, a fool, a soothsayer. You have to navigate who you are, what you should and shouldn't do. You fall into this, escape that. You must wish to consume yourself in your own flame. How could you wish to become new? Unless you had first become ashes. Mm -hmm. He's so witty, this guy. The sort of phoenix. He had to destroy and then come back. It's very interesting how that is a very common phrase. To do with the do away with the old so you can bring out the new. There's a lot of instances of that in nature as well. The old leaves must fall so the new sprouts can grow. If you had old bad habits, you gotta put them to ash and then become a new person. So you're consuming yourself, consuming those bad habits, consuming them in the fire of your own self. 
putting those habits to ash so they can just go away. Lonely one, you are going the way of the creator. You would create a god for yourself out of your seven devils. That's interesting. Because if you take, if you worship yourself and your own desires, you're very led astray. You have to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The seven devils, the seven deadly sins, I think he's getting at. Snow White and the seven dwarfs. Lonely one, you are going the way of the lover. Yourself you love, and therefore you despise yourself. Ooh. Did you catch that? First, you love yourself, you're going the way of the lover, but you also despise yourself. Because sometimes, even if you love someone, you can have something, a particular thing you don't like about them, and you despise yourself. And you despise them. Sometimes, even if, like, what I'm getting at is you can love something, but you might despise a thing, dislike a thing, right? So be careful, if you become too into your own self, you actually start to hate yourself, because you're not living up to this fantasy image you have in your head and it becomes an unhealthy form of a relationship instead of a productive one as only lovers despise the lover would create because he despises what does he know of love who did not have to despise precisely what he loved go into your loneliness with your love and with your creation my brother and only much later will justice limp after you. Limp, limp after you, huh? Not chase you, but limp. Justice being injured. With my tears go into your loneliness, my brother. I love him who wants to create over and beyond himself. And thus perishes. Thus spoke Zarathustra. To love... Those who create over and beyond themselves, and in the end they perish. So, they overcome themselves, because they notice how he said, to become new, you have to first become ashes. So, it seems like a constant cycle of regeneration of one's character. Think about it, you weren't who you were when you were 10, you're not the same at 15, 20, 25, 30, you're constantly changing and developing. Speaking to the lonely one would be very potent at this time as well. We have lonely people today, but they cope through the online sphere. But it's still fascinating the way in which he writes about it. The worst enemy you can encounter will always be you yourself. You lie in wait for yourself in caves and woods. Interesting because Shaitan waits for us on a lost straight path. And when Shaitan whispers to you, sometimes you cannot differentiate if it's your own thoughts or intrusive thoughts. They're not necessarily yours. Quite interesting and in how you have to overcome those waswasas, those sort of whisperings of Shaitan. You have to talk positive to yourself and not be overly harsh and critical upon yourself. It's very unique, isn't it? What do you think? Nietzsche is quite a unique person. By the way, if you'd like to join my blog, it's www.subscribestar.milhanarchive. I hope to see you there and take care.